Verizon Untethered, an insider story of innovation and disruption, tells the story of how Verizon grew from an underdog regional phone company in 2000 to the global communications giant that it is today. The author of that, author of that book is the former chairman and CEO of Verizon, Ivan Seidenberg, and he joins me now. It's been a long time yes, since David. you and I you sat down. I'm Great well. to see you. Yes. As usual, in your understated way, your book is not about you as much as it's about all the other people and all the decisions that made Verizon a very strong competitor and company during, of course, what was your very successful tenure. Why do you always take a back seat on these things, Ivan? I don't think I take a back seat. I think the company is in the forefront of this. You know, and the reason I wrote this, I thought Verizon really had a good story to tell with a lot of lessons to be learned. And after collaborating with 50 of my colleagues and with Ram Sharan and a professional storyteller in the History Factory, Scott McMurray, we concluded there was a good story to tell. And here it is, Verizon Untethered. And what is the key takeaway that you'd like from people to sort of understand as you go through the history of the company, certainly from, well, from way back, but it's from the 9X days to the Bell Atlantic days, right up until the present or near present day? I think a couple of things. I think the first is we had a self-image that we provided a great, reliable network. Doesn't sound like a very complicated strategy, and it took a long time for us to get confident enough to make sure that we told that story all the time. And there were, there were two events that sort of made that happen. The first was 9-11. 9-11 said it's okay to provide a great network and getting the stock exchange back up and running was a great, a great achievement by our people. Or right, right not far Absolutely. from here, of course, which right. was partially destroyed in the work you guys did in those days. That's right, 140 West Street. And the other point was the stop. famous commercial, Can You Hear Me Now? That sort of reinforced our self-image, that our story is all about providing a great service to our customers. Yeah, you know, it's interesting in reading that part, and, and it's hard to understand exactly how important that might have been for the company. I mean, advertising, it, re it really, and marketing becomes that important in a sense for, for the growth that you saw? Well, that's interesting, it, yes. Uh, I think you leverage that once you achieve what you wanted to achieve with which, which was getting the stock exchange back up and running. But since we're on your show, for years, analysts would say to me, what's your strategy? And I always tell them, we don't want to provide great networks. And it never sounded exciting enough. But 9-11, and can you hear me now, reinforced the self-image and the, the foundation of what the company was all about. Right, and that still seems to be the theme, though there are some now who say to Verizon, well, the differential between you and your competitors in terms of network quality is not what it once was. You can't win on that anymore. And certainly your successor, Lowell McAdam, has had a more difficult time, I would argue, than perhaps you did in terms of the competitive landscape. Well, I think the current state in the industry, there's an enormous amount of disruption and discontinuity. Ram Sharan talks about that in the book. So Lowell's facing, I think, a harder job than I faced. But even though the competitors may be providing better networks, Verizon continues to lead the league in all the awards and all of the, uh, the accolades about what their network's all about. And when you get to 5G, uh, it's another game changer. Yeah, tell so, me what your thoughts are, because Lowell's actually was here with me a few weeks ago talking about really specifically the promise of 5G. It does seem to be an area, once again, where Verizon is trying to lead with the network quality, with all of the innovation. Are they going to be successful? No, absolutely. I think when you go back in time and you look at, we were the first to go from 3G to 4G. Now we're going from 4G to 5G. Uh, we put Fios in, which now leads to a, a whole generation of new fiber optic broadband networks. So I, I think here's the thing. Verizon, I always thought, viewed itself as an enabler for other people to create platforms around a robust network. And so I think the opportunities that will come to the company once they install and deploy broad scale 5G will be far greater than thinking about the limited number of the companies that are in the universe today that you can buy. So I really like what they're doing, not because that's the only thing they will do, but it's the first thing they, they will do now, which will lead to even greater opportunity coming in the coming years. You know, it's funny in looking at the, and reading the book, the pace of change in technology, the pace of change in terms of decision making, how quickly things can change, only continues to increase. You know, what do you advise current CEOs in terms of how to deal with that? Well, first of all, you have to pay attention to your customers. So your customers are the first ones to tell you whether or not you're on the right track or not. 
You can have great strategies, you can have all these mergers and acquisitions, your customers will tell you. So in our case, we worried about sales growth, churn, quality metrics. The market tells you exactly what you need to do. The other thing is every company needs to stick to first principles. And in our case, running a good network is first principles. And if we continue to do that, there'll be good years and bad years, but the trajectory over time will be up. Of course, you, owe, you say we. You're a Verizon guy through and through, what, 45 years, I guess, at the company. Oh, well, yeah. Um, how's life been since you left the, uh, the corner office? It's great. Yeah? Why? Yeah. Well, more time with my, my family, my children, my grandchildren. I get to dabble in projects. I don't have to get up in the morning and show up for work every day. I'm not responsible for other people. I'm responsible for my ideas and my projects. And uh, it's good. It's, it's, it's really good. And it's wonderful to look back at the industry and see it's a strong industry. And Verizon is a very strong company. Well, congratulations on the book. Thank you. It's a great read and certainly appreciate it. And nice to see you again. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Of course. I, it. Ivan Seidenberg, former chairman and CEO of Verizon with his uh, new book, Verizon Untethered. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.